drop, pin and drop. You, you've had um, some viral moments throughout your career in YouTube, right? One of those uh, situations was the Tony Sunshine, and uh, some guys pressed you about putting out some video that wasn't supposed to come out. Can you right. tell us about that? Yeah, you know, I was filming with Tony Sunshine for a few weeks. We had filmed a few episodes. One night we were in the studio and I was filming because I back then I had a camera that hold like 30 hours worth of content. You know what I mean? This was still tape or this was digital, like on, on a was, hard drive? This was digital. You take it from the camera, put it right on the computer, but it held 32 hours worth of footage. So let's just say deleting footage was a little bit of a hassle. You'd have like 300 files in there. So I'm filming all night. I get invited to go to the studio. And then at the end of the night, Tony Sunshine and a group of people are all talking in a circle. They tell me to come over. Mikey T, that footage needs to get deleted. Mikey T, the footage needs to get deleted. I'm like, oh, okay, the footage needs to get deleted. They're like Wait, all three weeks, like all the couple of weeks of footage. He's well, about? We, had, um, we had released an interview, but I'd gone to the studio like they had invited me out to a show. You know, Tony Sunshine was doing a show, but then they also invited me out to the studio to record, you mm. know, just B-roll type shit. You know what I mean? Shit that you wouldn't re even really be able to use this day and age because of the artist music playing in the background. Artists like to have cameramen around. You know, you probably know that, Panda. Right. They like to have cameramen around. So Tony Sunshine had me around. I'm filming everything. You know what I'm saying? No light propped up or anything like that. So the footage might have been a little bit dark. But nonetheless, Tony Sunshine's talking his shit on camera. He must have noticed he was saying some disses that he didn't want out to the public. So Tony Sunshine was like, you got to delete all the footage from tonight, Mikey T. Oh, so from just tonight. So he was feeling himself and he was saying some shit that could be interpreted as this is maybe the Joe or like general to, to terror squad, the situation he left at that time. Yeah. You know, dissing Joe dissing members of his own team. You know what I'm saying? So he actually wanted me to delete all that footage. And uh, he told me some other shit, Mikey T don't worry. We're going to bring you out to Orlando. We're going to shoot this whole documentary where I'm going to be uh, training to do some boxing or some shit like that. So this is, <laughs> mind you, this is 2010. You know what I mean? I'm a couple years into the game. I'm like, yo, all right, Tony Sunshine's talking about bringing me out to the mini mansion in Orlando. I'm going to film some shit. You know what I mean? He's selling me a dream. So then next thing I notice I don't hear from Tony Sunshine for weeks. My calls are going unanswered. You know what I'm like? So I'm like, all right, you know what? I got this footage right here. Um, I have a good connection with World Star Hip Hop. You know what I'm saying? Even though Tony Sunshine tried to fuck it up at the end of the video where they came in, they pressed me and shit, trying to mess up my relationship with World Star. I always kept a good relationship with World Star. So... I threw up these videos of Tony Sunshine talking a bunch of shit on World Star, and this is just a, a notice to anybody that comes on my channel in the future. If you come on my channel and you do an interview and you're talking all kinds of shit, it's going out. I'm releasing it. If you're going to come on my channel and you're going to talk all kinds of shit, don't think you're calling me next week and trying to tell me, oh, Mikey T, we can't release it. It's going to look bad for my image. Mikey T, I have a contract with this dude where if I diss him, Tony Sunshine tried to tell me some bullshit that he had a contract with Fat Joe where if he dissed him, he would have to pay like a hundred grand or something like that. What type of bullshit is that? The man has subliminally dissed Fat Joe about a hundred times. Do you owe him a hundred G's? Right, right. You ain't, you ain't worth a hundred G's, man. Fat Joe is not the reason that Tony Sunshine didn't blow up for crying out loud. Tony Sunshine had like six record deals. I think it was he seven. Probably, At the time that he did that Vlad interview, he said seven. And that was like, what, 2013? Something real way back, you know what I mean? Oh. Two, seven album deals. I want to know how many rehab facilities did they send you to, Tony Sunshine? That's what I want to know. How many rehabs did you have to check into, man? 
You know, when Fat Joe first heard 100%, he was like, what the hell's going on with this record? Why are they singing in Spanish and English? Let's just be real, man. If it wasn't for Fat Joe, the world probably wouldn't even know who Tony Sunshine is. Let's just be real. Being Big Pun's man wasn't going to do the job. Big Pun, amazing artist. Tony Sunshine, mediocre at best R&B singer. Every time Fat Joe had an R&B hook, they replaced him. They replaced Tony Sunshine. Akon replaced Tony Sunshine. Ashanti replaced Tony Sunshine. Let's be realistic when we're talking about this shit, man. So l- let me play. Let me play devil's advocate, okay? So him saying for you to delete it. Why did you not want to delete it? Did you feel some type of way after he didn't return your phone call? So you're like, fuck this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this out of spite to put it up. Well, after that night, uh, we're in the studio. Tony Sunshine like abruptly goes to the hospital. I don't know what the hell happened. Tony Sunshine was saying his throat hurts. So he abruptly went to the hospital. So we all break up out of the studio. And all right, so you're going to the hospital. I guess I'm going back to Connecticut. You know what I mean? There goes our night for the work. Um, But yeah, the footage just never got deleted. I held on to the footage. You know what I mean? That's something I wish I would have done a lot more. Wish I'd have a whole glossary of my footage. Back then, it was a little bit easier. As I said, I had like 30 hours of footage. The footage actually got put onto one of my editor's computer. Editor edited the shit up, sent it over to Worldstar, and that's pretty much how it got put out. Were you mad at Tony? Like, were you mad at him for for just like, I guess, dissing you in that way? Like, not uh, not returning your calls? No, nah, I was pretty much like, fuck it. You know what I mean? I was pretty much just like, all right. You know, I've tried to keep this relationship with Tony Sunshine. He was a little bit different of an artist that I was working with at that point. I was normally working with rappers. You know, I didn't let that slow my grind up. I actually moved on to better interviews. So I wasn't really feeling that type of way about Tony Sunshine. But you know what I mean? We were releasing dozens of clips to Worldstar, some of the most controversial shit at that point in time. You know what I mean? Between all the 40 Glock stuff. You know what I'm saying? We're just releasing all that stuff to Worldstar. So it wasn't really like that. It was just about sort of like, okay, this is a controversial clip. Domination, kicking Maserati Fox out of G-Unit. You know what I mean? I'm kind of known to have had a lot of these controversial clips up on Worldstar. Um, So I moved on and I'm interviewing Murder Mook. And this is where the whole run-in with Tony Sunshine actually comes in. Because I- yeah, so so take us to that. Like, what was the situation looking like behind the camera? Because we weren't there, we couldn't see what was going on. Right. Yeah. So the whole situation pops up when I'm with Murder Mook. So like I said, I'm not dwelling on no R and B, no failed R and B singer, man. I really can't do that. I got to keep on moving on. So who's the next people I wanted to interview? Respect to my brother Her- Herb McGruff. I got an interview with Murder Mook as well. And we all know Murder Mook was buzzing like crazy back then. That's a fact. You know, calling out Cassidy, challenging him to a $40,000 battle. So I'm like, yo, let me get an interview with Murder Mook. So I pull up, I link up with Herb McGruff in the Bronx. And uh, Herb McGruff's manager uh, got us some shots of Patron. So I was a little loose, man. I'm not going to front. I was a little loose that day. I was yelling on Tony Sunshine's homies too, but um, we'll get to that in a minute. So uh, I'm a little loose. Herb McGruff is late. And then I'm like, all right, we got to pull up to Harlem. So we're between Harlem and the Bronx. Harlem and the Bronx is like mad close to each other. You know what I'm talking about? A geographical type of, uh, yeah. like it's actually pretty close to each other. I'm not thinking none of that. I'm just thinking, yo, I'm going to go get this work done. I'm going to go get this work in. So I go over there, me and Herb McGruff, we're doing the interview and his whip. Interview went great. Interview's online right now. All you got to do is type in Mikey T, the movie star, Herb McGruff, uh, excuse me, Murder Mook. So I'm doing the, doing the interview with Murder Mook and his whip. Next thing I notice, Murder Mook says, yo, I'm going to go get a drink. I'm like, you want anything? I'm like, me and my boy, I'm with two of my boys. <clears throat> 
I'm with two of my boys, and my we're like, yeah, grab us a, a vitamin water or something. So he goes inside. Next thing I notice, uh, Tony Sunshine and all of his people are running up. Tony Sunshine and his people run up. Um, and I'm like, I said to my boys, I'm like, yo, I got to go face Tony Sunshine. I got to get out of this whip. So there was actually two people, I guess, pressed up against both sides of the car. So neither of my friends could get, so they could, neither of them could get outside of the car. So I get outside of the whip and then I look over to my right and I notice two cameramen standing right there. Wow. Yep. In my head, I go, damn. No wonder. I'm like, this is why Tony hasn't been calling me. He took the idea of Mikey T, the movie star, and just said, all right, all I really need is a cameraman. It would probably help if that cameraman didn't live two and a half hours away in Connecticut or whatever the situation was. There was two cameramans standing out there, and I was like, oh, I see what this is. Because when I got out of that whip, I was pretty much ready for anything. You know what I mean? Uh, Rumors had started going around that – they had said that Tony Sunshine was told to make it right. Whatever you got to do, make it right. So uh, I get out of the car. Me and Tony Sunshine have that conversation. I let him know that the footage got into the hands of my editors. There was nothing I could do. He's like, well, why didn't you make a statement saying I didn't diss Fat Joe? And I was like, yo, nobody gives a shit that you didn't diss Fat Joe. They only care that you did diss Fat Joe. Well, why didn't you reach out to me? Why didn't I reach out to you? You were ignoring me for three, four weeks because you found another cameraman because you probably didn't want to, you know what I mean, spend $1,000 to bring me out to Orlando or some petty ass bullshit like that. So uh, what else everybody didn't see on camera was that there was about, a dozen and a half people out there. Mm. There was there was like 18, 20 people out there lined up. You know what I mean? Pressed against the car. Tony Sunshine standing on a stoop right here. So I walk over, walk through everybody. Nobody put a hand on me. Walking through six dudes standing like some knights in armor. You know what I'm saying? On some real militant shit. So I walk over and I'm standing by Tony Sunshine and he's like, you know what this has done to me? Like we're in some type of a freaking cinematic. This is after the footage that we saw on the internet? Because the footage that we saw is like you, you're right by the car. Right. This is all the same day. I know, but 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 the the scene you're talking about right now is after that, after that clip. Got you. Okay. This is after that clip. Tony walked over to the sidewalk. And then I walked through all of his homies and stood by him. And I was like, yo, Tony, how are we going to make this right? He's like, you know what you just cost me? And that's when he fed me that whole bullshit story about having some sort of a contract where if he dissed Fat Joe, he would get charged $100,000 or something like that. I really don't understand why he was trying to feed me that type of a story. That sounded like the most absurd bullshit I had ever heard. And that's pretty much where the day ended, man. Um, As far as why they didn't do anything that day, I I really can't explain more. Maybe they were just there to get, they were just there to get that video footage to serve it up to whoever wanted to see it. So when you're by the car, your collar kind of looks stretched out a little bit, but they didn't touch you. They didn't do anything to you. Well, to be honest with you, man, if you notice that shirt, that's an old Hollister shirt. <laughs> Prob- yeah. That's the old Hollister shirt that I had literally been wearing probably since like, you know, my high school days and shit like that. Just to be real with you, man. Right. You know, them Hollister shirts kind of Hollister Abercrombie kind of went out in popularity, but them shits would kind of wrinkle. And plus, like I said, I was out running around and it was a little bit hot, but that didn't come from nobody like grabbing my collar or anything like that. Gotcha. And, um, a lot of people were saying that it looked like you had been crying or that you were really scared. Like, what was your emotions at that moment when you seen all those guys? Because because you you said that, oh, Tony didn't diss Joe or, or like you he, he made you say that right on camera pretty much. Yo, yeah. But the whole thing is when I got out of that car, when I got out of that car, I was just ready for whatever. If somebody was going to punch me in the face. If somebody was going to throw me on the floor, if somebody was going to do whatever to me, 
I was ready for whatever was going to happen. You know what I mean? So was I scared? Was I nervous? Uh, probably all that, but I wasn't too nervous or scared to get out of the car and confront him. I wasn't too scared or nervous to walk through all of his people and actually continue speaking to him. You know what I mean? Uh, but nah, he didn't do none of that shit to me, man. And uh, pretty much. Well, I well, why did you say, why did you say that he wasn't talking about Joe when he was talking about Joe? Did well, you just well, I had to make it look good for Tony Sunshine, man. I mean, shit, even Easy E signed off Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. You know <laughs> what I mean? Even Easy E signed off Dr. Dre and Ice Cube when he freaking came on there and you know what I mean, jumped him in the studio. So uh you had the conversation with him after that, which he he fed you that um the bullshit about oh, you know, I get charged $100,000 for talking bad about Joe and everything. Did he give you any other further details, like at this point that he is back with Joe now? He doesn't want to beef with him anymore? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah. He was saying, so. he was like, I was supposed to be on Fat Joe's next album. I had a hook on Fat Joe's next album. Yeah, he was saying some shit like that, actually. I had a hook on Fat Joe's next album, and you just cost me this opportunity. You know what I mean? But like I said, every hook that Tony Sunshine ever had with Fat Joe, he was pretty much replaced. Yeah, he he laid down the, the reference vocals pretty much, right? Yeah, he was laying down the reference vocals, and then they brought in Ashanti. You know what I mean? Or then they brought in Akon, or then they brought in R. Kelly. However it was, man, you know what I'm saying? Tony Sunshine just didn't get his just do in the game. I. I mean, it was his own boys who didn't find him to be talented. Because, you know, um, on the, the Vlad interview, he did complain about the fact that, like, he wasn't featured on songs and everything like that. Um, I would say that he is a talented singer, but I don't know, for 23 years, pretty much, he's never had an album put out. And what he said on that Vlad interview was that the seven record contracts, he delivered an album each time, and they never got put out. Yeah, you see this, you see this frequently, man. But the uh, one of the things that I heard was when Rick Ross had Akon on a hook, Akon wanted to charge like a hundred racks. So Ross was like, Yo, Mass Pike, Mass Pike, come redo this hook. But with like Fat Joe and, and you know, Tony Sunshine, it was just like the complete opposite. It was like, We need you, Ashanti. We need you, you know what I mean? So it was like kind of the complete opposite. What was that experience like for you during those few weeks that you were recording with him? Did you feel like you were really building a rapport with him? Did you think that he was a solid dude or like you picked up on certain things that were little red flags that maybe you didn't see at the time? Oh yeah, you always know it's a red flag when an artist has you driving around doing his errands with you. You know what I mean? I was like, cooling with Tony Sunshine and the man was like doing his errands and I'm like oh my god yo bro I got I got more important shit to do with my life you know what I mean than to watch you around like just handling the everyday things of your life you know because I'm always trying to move around like I just said I was interviewing Herb McGruff and then Murder Mook you know but I do show these artists the respect you know I try to show them the respect that they show me that's why when Tony Sunshine invited me out to a show, I went, I filmed him at the show. You know what I mean? In addition to filming an interview for him. How did the, the situation with him like start? Like, how did you meet him or, or get to know um, he just like hit you up on online or like, how did that happen? It might go back to, it probably has to go back to uh, MySpace. You know what I mean? Because I don't think Twitter was on and popping like that back in the day no. so yeah i had reached out on myspace and at that time um he possibly email man my bad possibly email and at that time you said that you were not even um covering singers you were doing rappers so what what about him made you want to go ahead and pursue that to begin with just the legendary well, ts group him being a part of it or yeah yeah you know sometimes you hear about members of the group that didn't really get their just due, you know what I mean? That didn't really get that uh, exposure put on them, you know what I mean? You'd hear about members, certain members of the group, you know what I mean? But then you don't hear, you hear the other one's name, but you don't see as much video content. And I was kind of like, man, I would like to go shine a light on what he's been doing. I would like to explore and show the 
people on the internet, everybody that he is still here and he has been pursuing a career and also explain where some of the things may have went wrong. So yeah, that that's definitely um, one of the reasons that I, I went after certain artists, you know, because you would just see that they weren't getting their just due and they didn't have as much of a scope put on them. That's one of the reasons I got involved in the game in the first place. I didn't hear enough news about certain artists. Right. And then there was also footage that came out after that incident when uh, you were in the car with Domination, I believe. Domination's going in on Tony. You know, what was that like? Like, what happened? Domination, you know, I built a relationship with Domination and Bangum Smurf. And when Damo heard about what Tony Sunshine did, he was tight. He was like, yo, Mikey T, what is wrong with you? I, want, I wanted to slide on Tony Sunshine after that shit happened. Why didn't you call me? You know what I mean? He immediately wanted to take it there. He's like, how the hell would you let this R&B singer do that? You know, we filmed together. He's like, the hood was telling me about that shit. He wanted to go ride on Tony Sunshine after that, man. So what is your your perception of Tony? Because he's the R&B singer, but at times he tries to, to, you know, exude this tough guy exterior, right? Like if you if you read his social media posts at times like to me in my opinion um it comes off very insecure you know like i think that he should just be the r&b singer like he's talented he can sing you know but the problem is yes you have a lot of tough guys around you you have some guys really about that life but you don't have to be that right yeah 100 percent, man uh when i look at his situation it's like the whole tough guy image mixed in with the R&B, it doesn't work. But back in the day, these guys didn't know that. I've been around other R&B singers who tried to employ those same methods. They kind of think like the 90s era, like that they wanted that rough, uh, you know, like how all these dudes were rough and from the streets, they wanted that on the R&B singer, but they must not be remembering like the genuines and like all the way that some of these guys blew up. Like you gotta show your soul. That's why The weekend blew up. The weekend's not here trying to act like he's going to drag you from his Tim boots. You know what I mean? Right, right. The, the weekend, I mean, that's what R&B music is, right? You're, you're like bearing your soul, your heart and everything. That's what people like in that genre. Yeah, man. And uh, honestly, that's where I feel like some of these guys, Tony Sunshine in particular, went drastically wrong. You know what I mean? Shit. And then the insecurities. It's like, Panda, why does he dish you? You know what I mean? Why did he dish you? I know, like that that was my whole thing because it's like I, I spoke to his people, I had offered him an opportunity to come onto the platform, tell his side of things, you know, and he he didn't want to do it. You know, his people said that, yo, Tony doesn't like to talk about negative things, but then on social media, he's constantly taking shots and everything. Like for me, it's just like I'm just the news guy. Like, go and get mad at Cuban, get mad at the people that are saying the things about you, you know? I mean, come address it. If you're going to address, you know, Panda Chop News, come address it on the Panda Chop News YouTube channel, man. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to just go on rants on your Instagram, social media, and then you're going to, in the next breath, you're going to say, oh, I don't like to address the beef. Well, now you're addressing the beef and it's on 18 random YouTube pages. Like, <laughs> What do you think we are? We're in the 90s or something where you make this video and nobody's going to, it's not going to just start going viral. Right. You, you know? can lie about it and say that it doesn't exist and everything. It's um, not the 90s no more, bro. And you know what I'm saying? And I think it's a little bit too late because the weekend, with the weekend taking over the R&B music scene, he really just showed that you don't need to be no tough guy. The, like that's not what r&b is about please miss me with that tough guy r&b shit man you know what i mean and i'm a big r&b guy i'm a big r&b fan man so me too. please miss me with the tough guy r&b shit man so have you spoke to tony after that situation not whatsoever tony sunshine doesn't seem to have addressed the situation whatsoever um tony sunshine has never reached out to me um yeah he never reached out to me whatsoever i'm really shocked that he didn't address the situation on vlad but like you say he wouldn't come on here and talk about uh controversial situations 
I would have to imagine that may have been one of the topics he took off the table for his Vlad interview. Would you say that your initial reaction was anger after that situation happened with him or like you were confused? Like, what would you say that you were feeling? My initial reaction to that man was, how do we move forward? How do I move forward in the game? Because I don't want people to think this is going to scare me from doing what I love to do. You know what I mean? I was like, I got to go out there and I got to create better content. I've got to get better bigger interviews. You know what I mean? I got to keep on doing things, you know? So that's why I just kept my ear to the street. I kept my, uh, my, I kept what was in my heart too. That's why I went out and was covering uh, big L's homie Herb McGruff, but I also wanted to go out there and cover bigger stories as well. You know, like that's why I went after the French Montanas. That's why I seeked an interview with Max B while he was locked up. You know what I mean? Got an interview with Rick Ross. Ended up going to the Pop That music video shoot with French Montana and doing an interview with Lil Wayne. That's really what I knew I had to do after this situation. I was like, yo, Mikey T, you need to show the world that you're not going to give up. 